Well, one today is Thursday, December 8th, 2022. This is Week in Charts. I'm just going to thank all you guys and girls for attending tonight. I appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule. If you would like to attend live, you can go to daylearner.com slash webinar. Register even the link is go is old and you'll be registered for all shows unless I forget to add a new show. So what are we talk about? Oh, you can also go to my homepage, DaveLander.com, on the day of the show. So obviously we talk about current market conditions and your questions on trading as we always do, and your favorite stock and crypto picks. For the focus, there's a few things I want to talk about. Intraday trading, I want to talk a little bit about if it's worth it. And strong maybe on that with a lot of caveats, and that'll make sense in a few minutes. I've quit the intraday trading many, many times <laughs> to focus on a core methodology, but every time I get out, I get pulled back in, and that'll make sense in a minute. In my mind, the trade part of my Trading Simplified show, which I probably should make part of this show, I talked about the tools for life and for trading. And I want to do a, a brief recap on that based on the feedback and it's something that i put out there and it's like this is going to either be total crap or it might actually be something and i was kind of leading towards a total crap thing and turns out a lot of people it struck a chord with a lot of people so it's got to be pretty exciting uh mailbag i got some stock picks a question here or there and a question about who's who in the group and fomo and things like that and that'll make a lot more sense in one minute too there's a disclaimer screen. As you know, you can lose money trading or as often summing up. All predictions are about the future and a lot of stuff can happen between now and then. And I stole that from Greg Morris. All right, I want to talk a little bit about intraday trend trading. Now, I, I've i preached against day trading so much over the years that I guess a year or two ago, somebody I said something about day trading and they, they, they thought I was kidding around. I'm like, no, I actually will do some intraday trading. And I've always done a little bit of the opening gap reversal stuff over the years. But in more recent times, I, I will put on maybe something like the E-minis or maybe something like ETFs. I'll look at LabU, LabD, SoxS, SoxL, JDUG, and JDust, and Gush and Drip every day. I try not to trade every day, and that'll make sense in just one second here. But if an opportunity presents itself, then I'll step in. Now, as I said a thousand times a while back, probably was two years ago now, I remember with the E-minis, I went like a day without a trade and I was kind of shocked. And then I went two days without a trade and three days without a trade. And then I think it was like on the fourth day, I took a trade and made money. And, and Maybe on the fifth day or sixth day, or I forget when, a few days later, I had no trades, and then I, I made money on another trade. I'm like, what the hell is happening? I'm not getting trades, and when I do, they seem to be working, which is just the opposite of my chasing my own tail, which I've done on, on some occasions. Well, as I said quite a bit, what happened was I actually changed my charts to a 15-minute chart. And that was taking a lot of the noise out. In fact, by accident, I changed the chart today to a five-minute chart. And I, every time I glance over, it started stressing me out. Then I realized what had happened. So taking one step further, now I wouldn't do this on daily charts, obviously, but on intraday charts, to take things one step further, what I did was I removed the coloration of the bars. So we don't know if this is an up bar or a down bar, but from the looks of it, it probably was a down bar, right? But that has helped me quite a bit because if you're watching a market that's kind of chopping around and you see a big fat red bar, it looks like the end of the world. So the higher time frame charts, and now I'm, I'm up to a 30 minute chart and that happened a few, it's like with the, with the intraday stuff, I get so frustrated with it, I, I it's like, um, few weeks ago, my back was really, really hurt. And it still still bothered me now, but it's not nearly as bad as it was. And my arm was started going numb from an impinged nerve or whatever does that. And I was talking to a, a doctor friend of mine who also trades, who's also a client. And um, I asked him, thinking I'd get a little free advice. <laughs> 
it's like, uh, what do I need to do about that? And when I start day trading and and watching the screen, my arm starts really hurting, my back starts really hurting, my upper back. And he said, well, stop day trading. It's kind of like Dr. Doc that hurts when I do this. Well, from that episode, which I'm feeling better now, and you'll see one reason why, still got a little bit of an ache going on. But I do believe we're only wired to make so many decisions. And that's why I, I preach or used to preach at least so much against day trading. But I do think that if you can catch a trend and ride it all day long, provided you're not watching the screen all day and ruining your eyes and causing back problems and stress and dropping F-bombs like crazy, then I think there are times when you could step in and make a little money while waiting on the longer term trades to happen. Now, if you take a look at this chart, you can see on this day here, and I'm gonna show you the actual dates in one second, we had a nice trend day lower, followed by a nice trend day lower. And then this second day here kind of shocked me because usually that doesn't happen. Usually you get a choppy day after a nice trend day. And then we finally got our choppy day here. And then I think this might be today's action, but I'm not sure. Anyway, we'll take a look at that chart. Now I was a little hesitant to show you this chart and talk about day trading at all, just because I don't want to make it look easier than it actually is. But in some ways, it can be easy if you're willing to wait and wait and wait and wait and wait. And that's really, really hard. And one thing I've learned from doing a little bit of this intraday trading over the last few years is that it does kind of exacerbate the psychological learning curve of the trading psychology like tremendously. It's like it's one thing being in a position and then waiting and then waiting and then waiting and waiting and waiting for the trigger and then having a trigger like, oh, it's going against me and then think about that. It's another thing to do this intraday stuff and then go through all these emotions quickly. So it does kind of put that into a bit of a pressure cooker, which obviously could be a negative thing, but it does help me think about a lot of these trading concepts, especially as they relate to trading psychology. And basically the psychology is, as far as the, not the psychology, but the methodology would be, hey, just wait until you've got a trend day and trade it. I don't know, it's easier said than done. And fractal learning, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So, so yeah, that's I'm glad you brought that up because that sort of makes it like a fractal learning experience where you can get a lot of, you, you get the reps in more quickly. Now, I do think less is more, and that's why I've upped my charts to a 30-minute chart, and maybe in a few weeks I'll be up to a 60-minute chart. Now, going, I went back a couple of weeks and looked at my trades and this isn't this isn't the crux of what I do. The crux of what I do, or my main focus, is my core methodology, is getting into trends and riding them for days, weeks, and hopefully years. And that's where the real money is. But I'm here anyway, and I'm watching the market, or keeping a loose eye on the market at least. Sometimes not such a loose eye on the market. By the way, my trade station over there is a is not a, a stand up desk. It, it's a fixed standing desk whereas where i'm coming to you now is a uh it goes up and down it's an up desk that's the actual brand and the reason i do that is because after a while of standing there it reminds me like hey i'm getting kind of tired of standing we'll stop watching the screen dumbass implied <laughs> but anyway just going back a couple of weeks and keep in mind now, now don't i don't want to make it look this easy, right? But this just going back a couple of weeks, and, and then if I went back one more week, I think that was the week where my arm was hurting so bad and, and the performance was so poor, and I was falling in some of the, into those, some of those pitfalls that I'm always preaching about, where I said, you know what, Dave, you better back way off on this. And that, that might have been when I went to 30 minute chart, and then let's not start kissing each other just yet, but things seem to have improved since. But anyway, going back a couple of weeks to I guess two Mondays ago, you could see the market worked its way mostly lower. And for the most part, it trended lower all day and I made $480. The next day it gap it uh didn't gap low, but it broke down. It looked like it was going to come unglued and then it just chopped sideways. And I made a whopping $52 on that day. But after looking at the charts at the end of the day, I was happy to have it. 
Now on Wednesday, I did end up buying drip and I stopped out of it for small loss. And then the market began to take off. And I actually bought in kind of late on this because I was like, well, we've been here before. Something happens with news or Fed or whatever, and the market takes off, then, then comes right back in. But I started looking at the ETFs, and I'll show you my screen in one when we get to the live charts. And one thing I've been doing lately, and this is this is kind of answering the question. This is one one reason I'm talking a little bit about the intraday stuff is somebody recently asked me in Facebook about different strategies for different time frames. Well, that was a question three or four weeks ago, and that can't be answered quickly in one webinar but i think over time i could show you some of the things i did or did not do or did poorly and talk about those things so you need to wait until you see that range expanding one thing i do and i don't know if it's going to show up as good in telechart because i don't really pay attention to that range as much as i pay attention to the range that i have programmed on my trading station but i'm looking at the the intraday range, the high minus the low, remember we can't, we don't have the benefit of the gap in there. So I'm just looking at high minus low compared to the average true range of the stock going back 10 days. And I can give you that formula if you're interested. And one thing I try to do, unless it's like an opening gap reversal situation or unless the whole market's beginning to explode like it did on Wednesday, but even, even then, I will go in and uh, make sure that I, I'm watching that range expand at least a little bit. So what I'm saying is, and I've talked about this before, go in and look at the webinars I did on Holy Grail Day hunting. But what I'm looking for is I'm looking for that range to be at least 50% or close to 50% of its average range. And you'd be surprised, a lot of days when the market just chops around, that range stays under 50%. And my thinking there is, it's kind of like trend following, right? It's like, well, if this market is gonna go from here, this I just put the spiders up to make it easy, but if it's gonna go from here to here, it's gonna pass through here somewhere between first, okay? So if that range is going to expand, and that's the only way we're gonna make money intraday is with the volatility is expanding like that in one direction at least. And again, I don't want to be in and out, in and out, in and out, as I've said, a nausea I'm like the rat going for the cocaine. I want to put positions on and let them work all day. Although I, I did try to outsmart the market a little bit. And that's one of those, you know, again, it exacerbates a learning curve. You realize, oh, okay, I'm doing that thing again where I'm trying to micromanage. But anyway, when the market took off in the 30th, there was a lot of ETFs like SoxL and of course the index ETFs and the E-minis themselves and all also really, really took off. And in a case like that, and I'm a little hesitant to say this, but you could almost buy things that are going straight up and put it a fairly tight stop right below. Like maybe that 30 minute bar, it's, it's starting to expand. You can maybe put in a stop right below and then begin to trail that stop as it moves in your favor. So that's a route day. This is this is what we live for. This is what we dream about. The only problem is after a route day, usually you get a choppy day or a series of choppy days. And one thing that really frustrates me is I'll have a day like this and I really won't get that excited because I know that the chop is going to follow. And if I don't carefully stay disciplined, and again, there's that fractal learning. Good uh, Good point on that, SWJ. If I don't stay disciplined, I'm gonna slowly and sometimes not so slowly give up those profits. So you can see on the first, it looked like the market was gonna retrace that big old run higher. And I'm sure I got short something on that day. And that's why I had a little bit of a loss. And you can see it just chopped around. And the next day it made a nice opening gap reversal and I don't know why, it seems like I should have done better than 261. But by the way, this is a good exercise, okay? And I need to do this more. Go in at the end of the day, put your equity on a chart, see what the chart did, and, and say, okay, well, on a day like this, this thing went straight up. I could have thrown a dart at anything and made money, right? 
on this day, you, you he's okay. Well, he faked me out or whatever, but fortunately, he only lost 160 bucks. Now, on this day, this is a pretty cut and dry open and gap reversal, although it did look like it was going to melt down, right? Because remember, that is 30 minutes. That's a pretty big slide, but it did find it slow and began to rally. So I have to go in and look at what I traded on that day and see if I could improve upon that. Now, obviously, I think this was Monday. The market, for the most part, just worked its way lower the whole day. So that's another trend day. I'm still was a little cautious after a choppy day and then after this big up day there. It takes a while for the market to kind of work through all this trading when the market makes such a big move in one direction. A lot of people are caught on the wrong side of the market. Anyway, so that was a nice trend day. And then actually on, I guess that was Tuesday. Tuesday I did okay. And the reason I'm just saying okay was I think if memory serves toward the end of the day, somewhere around here, I was up maybe twice that amount. And then this market just started to kind of go straight up and it erased a lot of those gains, which, you know, that's another one. This is one reason I don't try to teach this other than just telling you what I'm experiencing and what I'm learning as I learn it. But one has to wonder, it's like, okay, if you're seeing, let's say $1,400, and this is a fairly small account. So it's like, you know what, $1,400, and I've only got an hour left in the market. The market's starting to chop around, it's starting to reverse on me. Maybe I might wanna take that. So that's where you start adding in all these decisions. And I could be a lot more disciplined in my core methodology where I have everything laid out over the years and then I've been kind of, and I don't mind, but I've been kind of beat to death with so many questions on it that I have an answer for everything. And I know what to do, I don't always do it. It's a lot easier as I often say in my trading service because I lay that plan out and I have to follow that plan, right? Because I'm not gonna give you a stock to trade and not trade it myself. And I'm not gonna tell you to do this, this, and this, and not do it myself. So in order for me to do it, in order for you to do it, or if I suggest you do it, I'm gonna do it too. Also like today, I'm not recommending any stocks for tomorrow in the trading service. And that's because I am not gonna take any new positions tomorrow. And that's just how it is. Maybe if I see an IPO, do like a buy at B toward the close. John, stay on top of those IPOs for me. John's in the Facebook group. And remind me if there's any I need to look at. Maybe I'll put on one of those. But as far as the core methodology, the swing to intermediate term tr swing trading, I'm not going to do any of that. And by the way, like I said, you know, anybody should be happy with 721 a day. I mean, this is just kind of like ancillary S and G stuff I'm doing. I don't want to minimize it, but believe me, I get stressed out too much. Otherwise, I wouldn't be talking about my back injury here. 721 times 252. You know, so if you could do that every day, I know it's a big F, but that's $181,692 a year, but who's counting? <laughs> well, it's a little tougher than that. So you do that, but then you do this, and then you do this and kind of whittle away at it. Now, I'm kind of angry, at not angry, but I'm not happy with this because it was so much more and I faced a dilemma of do you, do you cash out when you're up kind of big? It's like, well, $1,400 here. I'd have left a thousand dollars on the table, right? So that's where it becomes a little more difficult. But this is two different situations. This thing just went straight up all day, and then in this case, it started really chopping around. And I don't know about you, but it's a little more difficult than it looks on this day. Although at the end of the day, it looks pretty serious, pretty obvious. And then we had this choppy, 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 choppy day. And guess what I did? I did not do a damn thing all day. I was so proud of myself, right? And then I just couldn't stand it. At the end of the day, I tried to outsmart the market. I thought I was breaking down and then it started to rally. And I tried to do a little Jackie Mason trading as opposed to just sitting on my hands and enjoying the spoils of my recent labor. And then today I was a little skittish just based on all the recent action. But for the most part, the market was pretty choppy. Most of the move we saw was, was early in the day. And this isn't, this isn't a whole day here. But anyway, my point is, if we could just trade these trend days or these nice opening gap reversals, then I think that we do okay. And then the secret to the intraday trading is figuring out when not to trade. And, and here's the thing. It's pretty obvious when you should be trading. It's pretty obvious when you see this range breakout like this. 
and it just keeps on keeping on, you need to figure out whether or not you need to be in that market or not, or, or rephrasing that, you need to figure out how to get into that market. But again, if it's just chopping around, you want to stay out. And what I like to do is I, I'm trading a little bit less around the open than I used to just to see if it fakes out. But sometimes, as you know, you get the opening, that's the high ticket, the low ticket for the day, and it just runs all day. And that's fine. That's that's a great, that's a wonderful thing to happen when it happens. But more often than not, you do get a lot of fake outs around the open. There's a lot of people say, well, I don't trade the open. It's like, eh, well, you might have to trade around the open because that might be a big move you want to be on. So I guess that's one of the downsides of the 30-minute charts is it really minimalizes that open, but it also minimalizes the zigs and zags. And if you do what I did by taking the color out the bar, then you're not as stressed out about the trade because the red is just a big warning sign. Like, oh my God, oh my God, I'm losing money, losing money, losing money. It's just reminding you of that if you're long, of course. And then the green bars mean, well, things are good. And it can kind of, from a psychological standpoint, kind of suck you in a little bit. So that's why I use those amber bars, which are, which are kind of agnostic as far as the color is concerned versus red or green. And hopefully that makes some sense. But anyway, at the last minute, I decided to throw that in just because of the questions I get on the intraday stuff. Any questions on the intraday stuff or anything else I've rambled on about so far? Oh, oh my God. Wow. <laughs> my heart's pounding. Uh, he said, SWJ says, uh, check your Amazon P&L statement. Well, I, <laughs> I haven't gotten paid on that book in years. Uh, David Ryan on IBD Live Tuesday featured your book as one of his 10 must-read books on trading recommendations. Wow. <laughs> my eyes are watering. Oh, geez. Wow. That most respect for David Ryan. Geez. Okay, well, I can't, uh, I can't wait to check that out. What, which book was it? Was it the uh, Layman's Guide to Trading Stocks? Wow, that makes me feel great. So yesterday for my Trading Simplified show, I did a uh, segment on the tools. And you know me, everything I see, I try to bring back to trading. How does this relate to trading? How can I use this in trading? And so. I was thinking, how can I use these tools for trading? Now, I'm, I'm gonna try to give you the Reader's Digest version here, but I know I've got two different audiences. I've got my stock charts audience and I have my DaveLander.com audience. And since this material was well received over there, I thought I'd bring it over here. I guess if it if it stank over there, I, you you never hear about it again. But anyway, let me try to give you the Reader's Digest for those who who didn't see the show. Marcy, my wife, likes to binge watch a lot of stuff. And usually she takes me along for the ride. Now, I don't mind. Years ago, I would fight it and I'd just pull a laptop out and start surfing the net or looking at charts or whatever. But I've learned to kind of chill out a little bit. And I mean, I enjoy doing that too. I know it's it's not the highest and best use of your time. And I'm going to be, beat you up on that in a minute. <laughs> we'll get there. But anyway, we do occasionally find stumble across something we really enjoy. And usually these series are crime and murder and just most of the stuff out there is pretty negative. And we like to watch a little something positive before bed. So we'll about nine o'clock or so, we'll try to find something. So that'll be in our head versus a drug cartel cutting off somebody's head, you know. Anyway, we stumbled across Stutz, and it was Jonah Hill and his psychiatrist. And I'm willing to kind of poke around these documentaries a little bit, a little bit more than my wife. She's a, she enjoys them too, but I was willing to give it a little bit of the benefit of the doubt. But she pointed out, she goes, eh, you know, it's an actor talking about a psychiatrist. It's like, that's a little narcissistic and pretentious. And I'm like, yeah. But we decided to give it a shot. And I really enjoyed it. And this is Phil Stutz here. And here's the book. And I'll have this as a Friday. I'll put this on my books to read page. And the link is down below, will be down below in the comments. 
And it's, as I'm watching this, I looked up to see if he had a book, and, and he does. And it's with um, Barry Michaels, too. But it's a really good book. And he uses these little stick figure tools and these little simple drawings. And it just makes so much sense. And it kind of he kind of turns the world of psychology on its head. And, and Marcy was kind of like blown away thinking about this stuff for life. And of course, I was thinking about this stuff for trading. And he had one particular little tool that I thought was really useful for trading. And before we get to that, as I just said, you know, Marcy was thinking about for life and I was thinking for trading. And then of course, I got to bring everything back to trading. If you use some of these tools to improve your life, then that's going to improve your trading. I'm still I'm still thinking about David Ryan. Wow, I'm such a such a goofball. That's exciting. Anyway, as I often say, your your trading will affect your life, and your life will affect your trading. As I was saying yesterday, I have a detached office. I walk down a little porch and go into the house. I used to have a detached small little house, little guest house. I worked out of it now. I just, with new house, is smaller than a subdivision or, or our neighborhood. I don't know if it's a subdivision. But anyway, I physically have to leave my office to go home. And I physically have to leave the house to come back here. It kind of separates work from home. Plus, it's good, given the, the mess that I normally have going on in here. Anyway, it seems like whenever i walk in the house especially lately since my wife is is not as busy lately due to rising rates and the economy and she's got she has her own business she works out of the house but she works on call and so she's been home a lot and it seems like anytime i go home so to speak go home i get hit with a financial problem or some other problem or well, we need you need to pay tuition can you transfer some money for tuition or whatever the case may be so that kind of, especially if my trading is going bad, that kind of puts me in a worse mood. And sometimes I go home at night, I'm in a bad mood, had a bad day, or things aren't working out, or I can't find setups and whatever is happening. You guys trade, you know. I'll go home in a bad mood and that kind of, it just kind of creates this negative feedback loop. And that's where you gotta be really, really careful because your trading can influence your life, your life can influence your trading. And before you know it, you end up in this in this spiral. And and I'll come in here and it's like, okay, well, I need this money for tuition. Can I just pull that out the market? I'm Dave Landry. And it's like, you know, no, you won't, Danny. <laughs> you know, no, you don't, Danny. It's not that easy sometimes, but it puts you in, the, in kind of the wrong mindset. And you know, on the flip side too, it's like uh I'll start talking these grandiose plans or whatever, and and Marcy kind of like settle down beavis <laughs> you 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 had a good week <laughs> you know let's see if you can do a few more good weeks and then we'll talk about all these things so it does go it does work both ways and by the way obviously if your trade is going really really well you get euphoric you get a little too full of yourself uh dave ryan mentions your book and then the next day you go in and you're like i'm dave landry well that's usually when you get your ass handed to you usually if when i travel especially it's it's nationally, but sometimes internationally, especially, I come back like I just traveled the world, and 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 then I lose a bunch of money. <laughs> you know, I get all this validation, my head gets big, and then the market will shrink it right back up. Speaking of books and tools, Dave Landry referenced numerous times in CMT Level One. I'm afraid to take the CMT test. I don't know if I could pass it, but it's pretty exciting that uh, there's some. Some of my stuff has actually made it to there. Wow, that's 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 exciting. <laughs> so the one tool that really struck out, and I haven't finished the book, but I did finish the documentary, and I kind of jumped ahead in the book to this particular tool. And again, I'll try to get to as quickly as possible. If you want the longer version, you can watch last night's or uh, uh, the yesterday's show for Trading Simplified. But you have two choices, and one choice is going to give you the freedom to go on with life, and another choice is going to have you trapped in the past, and that's known as the maze. Now, if you 
choose to go with the freedom to go on with life, you have what's called outflow, which I didn't know the definition of because I jumped ahead in the book. But when I got back in the book, the definition made a lot of sense. And we'll get to that in just one second. But you got to be careful not to be trapped in the maze. And since I've seen this documentary, I've found myself a few times trapped in the maze, but it's easier to talk about other people. Uh, the story I, I told yesterday was this woman who's Marcy's mother's friend, and we were visiting Marcy's parents. She was going on and on and on about how she had this injustice at work. And, you know, Marcy's mom, we just had her 80th birthday. I think this woman's older than her. This was only a few years ago. So I graciously said she was 75 yesterday, but she's probably, was probably more about at least 76, 78 when this occurred. Anyway, she talked about this injustice that happened when they hired somebody younger. Maybe they were trying to push her out of the company or whatever, and how she held up her key. And, you know, 20, 30 minutes later, she's telling a story and she's all dramatic. And she gave that key. She slid that key across and said, take your key. I'm out of here. And she talked about how the company would not recover without her. And I was like, oh, geez, you know. And she walked away and I was like, wow, I feel bad for her. And Marcy's like, well, yeah, whatever, you know, and it's like, well, how's she going to find another job? And it's like at her age. And she's like, what do you mean? She's retired. It's like, well, I thought she was retired, but she just told this story about work. Marcy rolls her eyes and says, she tells that story every time I see her. That was 30 years ago, at least. So it's like, here's this poor woman trapped in the maze. And I think that this simple little concept could really, really help us in life, which of course will help us in trading. Now, of course, I'm going to bring it back to trading. But recognizing you're in the maze, and I'll give you a quick one, a couple of them, actually. Um, someone I know, and I don't want to give too many details, was aggravated with someone else. And that someone else had, had well, when they were still friendly, had given them a really, really nice bottle of wine. And they decided, for whatever reason, to go dig that bottle of wine out last week, and they couldn't find it. And they couldn't sleep at night thinking, now I'm probably embellishing a little bit, but it sounded like they were losing sleep because they were thinking, okay, so they broke into my house. They stole that bottle of wine back that they gave me. Maybe it was one of her kids. When was the last time her kids were here? Maybe they hired one of their kids to steal the wine back. And she got caught up in this maze, in this little cycle, and then... A few days later, she found the bottle of wine. It wasn't where it was supposed to be, but she had moved it for, she had put it out or whatever for a reason. It got picked up in the wrong place. So she got caught in a maze. I'm a bit of a Grinch when it comes to Christmas. I made a call earlier tonight about some Christmas related stuff, and I kind of got a little frustrated with the situation. And then when I hung up the phone, I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. It's like, it's like, oh man, I need to do these slides for tonight. It's like, but this and this and that. And it's like, wait a minute. What are you going to talk about? It's like, we could talk about the maze a little bit at least. It's like, well, you're caught in the maze. And it's like, ah, you're right. Now, we could easily fall into the maze when it comes to trading and get, and get trapped there, okay? And how do we do that? Well, we wing it. And the reason people wing it is it's much easier to wing it than to actually follow a plan. And I never could understand why people wing it, although I'm occasionally caught winging it, especially with this intraday stuff, you know. But I never could understand why people wing it when, especially like with my trading service, like, okay, here or here's a stock I like. Here's the entry. Here's the stop. Here's the initial profit target. There you go. And the reason they wing it is because the moment you – decide to follow that plan, you have to have a point where you recognize that you will be wrong. Now, it's probably even harder if you found the setup on your own because you're going to have to admit that you are wrong. And by the way, as I say probably every week, Larry Williamson wrote a book called The Middle Edge of Trading. Great book. I'm rereading that too. And basically, he talks about different personalities and it's it's really good book and how they relate to trading, obviously. And I took the personality test and I found out that I scored about zero 
and agreeableness. And, and I had no idea that I was not agreeable. I mean, I'm agreeable, don't you think? Anyway, as I've said at nausea, I go into the house and my wife and daughters happen to all be there at the same time. And I said, I scored a zero in agreeableness. Can you believe that shit? And they both looked at me like I pooed my pants. It's like, well, maybe I'm not as agreeable as I thought. There's a meme out there. I wish I'd have thought about it before the webinar where there's just this room is destroyed and you can see like Monopoly pieces everywhere and there's a board ripped in half. And it said the proper ending to any Monopoly game. Now I haven't played Monopoly with them in years, but that's what it's like to play Monopoly with me. <laughs> okay, system surfing. Uh, this is especially true with something that's new or unproven and then a lot of the complex and arcane. And as I was saying yesterday, last week at Bandcamp, a trader friend of mine who worked on the research side of things and his brother is a money manager who he's very close with. So he has this kind of uh, not unfair access, but like really phenomenal access to, to the tools that he needs, to the programming and all these different things in databases. So he can really, really study trading. In some cases, he's at a bit of an unfair advantage. And we were talking on the phone, this was many years ago, but we were talking on the phone and he tells you about the setup and he's making money on it. I was like, well, that's pretty neat. And I couldn't wrap my head around it. It didn't seem correct, conceptually correct, but I'm willing to have an open mind. And he was making money and I'm like, wow, okay. I said, well, that's really neat. And I'm thinking that maybe I might learn something here. And I was like, how did you discover this? He goes, well, I read about it this morning. And I'm like, wait a minute. I said to myself, like this guy read about something in the morning and he's trading in it in that afternoon in that af that afternoon and that's a really that's really a bad idea obviously so as i tell people you need to play devil's advocate quite a bit i found a little holy grail yesterday or day before and the perfect little things this was mechanical just pop out at me i'm going through the chart i went back about 5 years on a chart and it was absolutely a holy grail, amazing, amazing, amazing. And then I thought to myself, you know what, Dave, you've been here before. So as I started picking it out, there were, for every five of these beautiful signals I saw, there were five or 10 little tiny signals in between that you would have lost your ass on. And then occasionally you would have really lost your ass, which would probably negate the edge. So you've got to be really, really careful with your system analysis and you need to play devil's advocate and you need to find out what's the worst can happen. And for instance, with trend trading, your percent correct is going to be low, your accuracy is going to be abysmal and your drawdowns are going to be pretty ugly. You're going to spend most of your time less wealthy, as I often say, as a trend follower, but then bam, you knock it out the park. And as someone said earlier, it's like the fractal learning, the the intraday stuff you just saw kind of gives you an example of that. You knock it out the park, and then if, you could, if you're disciplined enough, you can go back to sitting on your hands. Confusing the issue with facts is a huge one. Classic Dave Landry, I was speaking at Traders Expo many years ago, and I had one of the all-day sessions, or half, half a day sessions. And when we got to the transitional patterns, there's the bow ties and that kind of stuff, I was showing the energies that I was short. And these were energies I was personally short or and or energies that I recommended in my trading service. And as I'm explaining the pattern, this guy blurts out in this, Hendrick, in this voice that sounded like Henry, Henry Kissinger. Let me back away from the mic. What about that situation in Nigeria? And I'm like, and then I wasn't sure what to say. So I said, what about the situation in Nigeria? He's like, ah, blah, blah, blah. They're going to cut off the oil and all this is going to happen. Then OPEC, and then he brings in, I think he brought in Venezuela. And all. I'm like, what does that have to do with the chart? You know, and he folds his arms and he's all pissed off. And I'm like, okay. Well, you know, it's kind of like a line from Caddyshack, you know, well, you don't get no coke if you're worried about the situation in Nigeria. So, yes, the situation in Nigeria was a very serious situation and oil prices should be going up. But with technical analysis, what is, is. And that's how you get, by the way, to the top of this little decision graph, right, is what is, is. Micromanaging is a huge one. 
and micromanaging you you do things like shit like a bird you know, like an elephant you you get in a trade and then five minutes later you get out and and this is a position trade that you should be in for weeks and hopefully years but you're out within 10 minutes as soon as it goes against you there's a whole host of bad behaviors that come along with micromanaging and i've i've done plenty of presentations on those recreational trading trading because you're bored or trading for action maybe when was it yesterday i lost 250 bucks or whatever it was maybe i was a little bored because i sat here all day and i didn't get a trade and, and i've got to watch wednesdays because wednesdays it's like i have to do a show i have to record a show on tuesday which means all day monday and then all day tuesday are involved with the show Wednesday's the first day of the week I need to kind of catch my breath. And that's when I can really look at the markets. And that could be a little bit dangerous as I preach. Some in uh, Tom McClellan's late mother, Marion McClellan, said some people trade when they have money and buy when they have money and sell when they need money. And others use more sophisticated methods. Well, taking that one step further, some traders trade when they have time, you know. I've got a friend of mine, pretty smart guy. He's kind of around a lot of traders and all, and he's kind of up and coming in the trading, in um, his trading career, right? Which is a side career. But he only can trade like the first 30 or 40 minutes of the day, then he has to go off to work. And that's actually working out pretty good for him. He's he's learning how to trade that time frame and all. But the other night he woke up, couldn't sleep or whatever. So he's got a separate little office in the back. He went out to his little office. He started trading E-mini futures in the middle of nights. Well, middle of the night. And all three of his kids, for whatever reason, woke up and went and joined him out there. And then he's got to come put them back in bed. His wife was still sleeping. I think she works too. So he's putting the kids back in bed. In the meantime, he's losing money on his S&P trades. And the other thing too is s and in the middle of the night, you know, unless Asia gets really hot and heavy. Uh, is probably a bad idea. So trading for action, trading when we have time, there's a whole ton of bad behaviors. Chasing rabbits, it's it's like lately in the Facebook group, and, and I'm gonna kind of talk about this in a minute, but we haven't had a whole lot to do as far as the core methodology is concerned. And I'm seeing a lot of people put up a lot of setups and, and maybe these are valid setups and valid methods of trading. And anything, a lot of stuff that's related to my stuff, I'm thinking like, Geez, that really doesn't look that great. I mean, you've got this part right and this part right, but it, it I think you could probably do better. And there's all kinds of chasing rabbits, like meme stocks are going taking off and you're trying to jump on those. And I'm guilty of a lot of this bad behavior, believe me. You know, check back often. The definition of insanity, doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different outcome. That happens in trading quite a bit. The problem there is there's a paradox because sometimes, especially like if you're following a solid methodology, like something that I've developed over 30 years, then you have to be willing to get knocked out, get knocked out, get knocked out, and then come back, you know, was it Chumbawamba? You know, get get back up again and take that next trade. And that trade is going to be amazing, okay? Maybe not that trade, but maybe the next trade will be amazing, you know? So, so that kind of makes you feel like the definition of insanity. But what I'm saying here, when you're stuck in the maze, is you're doing something and you keep doing that same thing over and over again. The problem is the market will occasionally award, reward some bad behavior, just like my little friend, you know, say hello to my little friend, <laughs> who was trading something he just discovered earlier that morning or trading something in the afternoon discovered in the morning. So you got to be careful with all these things, obviously, not honoring your stops, letting a, you know, I've said this a thousand times, somebody will bitch at me about some turd I recommended. And I'm like, geez, that stock's going straight down. I would never recommend that. When did I recommend that? And they're like, six months ago. I'm like, really? <laughs> so I'll go back six months and it was a beautiful setup. But it either never triggered or we stopped out of it. And I try to forget about trades as soon as possible. I can only remember one loss from the core trend trades. I'm sure there's plenty of other ones, but I only remember vaguely my last loss there. And I'm hope hopefully I'll forget about it soon, right? But not honoring your stops will get you into a lot 
of trouble. And there's obviously a, uh, a monetary damage that's done, but there's also a psychological damage that's being done too. And at the least, it's keeping you from focusing on what needs to be done. And the story there that comes to mind was someone I became friendly with. We were talking on the phone quite a bit. And I think he had my trading service, if I was even doing a trading service at that time. This was in 99. Yeah, it was in 99. And anybody who just believed in the trend could print money in 99, believe me. And I would love to go back and relive those glory days. But anyway, I had tons of stocks and they were all just going to the moon. And I was so excited. I called him like, are you, are you getting this? And he's like, no, I'm, I'm nursing a lot of bad positions. It's like, well, how do you nurse a position? I didn't know stocks had nipples, you know? Anyway, so you got to be really, really careful with not honoring your stops. Fear is always going to be there. But one of the, one of my epiphanies with fear comes from Mark Douglas, and he said that there's no fear in the markets. And I've actually done seminars where, and webinars where I pull up Coco, and Coco had a horrible bear market a few years back where it dropped about 60% or whatever. And I ask anyone, did, did this bear market stress you out? And not one person yet has raised their hand. I'm sure somebody will someday a cocoa trader will pop up. But the reason nobody raised their hands was because they weren't trading that market. So that kind of proves in and of itself that there's no fear in the market. That fear is with within you. And the epiphany I got from Mr. Douglas was that what you fear is not the markets, right? Okay. Cocoa didn't stress you out, did it? Sooner or later, somebody's like, hey, that stressed me out. But what you fear is your inability to do what you need to do when you need to do it. And we all have that fear in us, all of us, no matter how good we are. But every now and then, it's like you just follow things and then they all turn out great. You're like, geez, why do I stress out so much over trading? Just follow the plan. I know, easier said than done. Repeated mistakes, that that's kind of dovetails in with the definition of insanity. I make a lot of mistakes and I have this, uh, my digital notebook here, I'm trying to, the, the, new, the new software update has tags and I can put a tag on it, shame or mistake or whatever. And a big part of, becoming better as a trader and becoming consistent as a trader is accountability. You gotta be accountable for your actions. You gotta be accountable to yourself. And ideally you wanna be accountable to others too, which is much, much harder. But maybe it's hard to be accountable to yourself. But anyway, I put a little tag on any time I make an actual mistake. Like I forget it's Wednesday and forget it's a Fed day, you know? Kind of like Warren Buffett, may, you know, Warren Buffett, you know, the joke is that he's he paid somebody 100 grand a year to stop him from ever buying another airline, which would save him millions of dollars in the long run. It's like, well, maybe you hire somebody to tell me don't trade on Fed days, you know. And I've actually had a couple of you guys that, that send me calendars now. So I thank you on that. And and I'm going to get um, physical paper. You know, I'm going a little too far. It's in the digital world with this tablet. I used to just have it, and I have stacks of them. If you can, I'm not going to show you because you don't want to see how bad my office is. But I had stacks and stacks of notebooks, and now I just got that one notebook, which has thousands of pages in it now of handwritten notes. Anyway, so, but I still think I need to probably go and get a just a, a weekly calendar, put it in front of me, and on every Wednesday I need to write it's effing Wednesday, <laughs> you know, and then write down what. The, um, what the feds are likely to do or, or, or change that, what the Fed may be doing as far as meeting and all. Um, expecting more from the market. I'm guilty of this. Um, and, and this is where the 
the fractal nature of the intraday trading may help in some of these concepts. It certainly helped me. It's like yesterday or whenever that was, I had to, or day before, I had a seven hundred something dollar gain, but it was then it went to fourteen hundred dollars. But it didn't look like it was going to improve. It kind of blipped up there, and then all of a sudden it starts to come back down. And I've only got like an hour or so left of the day. The market's just not behaving properly. And I'm like, nope, I'm just going to hang on because I want to be that intraday trend trader that holds on no matter what. It's like, eh. And that's where that's where you're faced with a lot of decisions. And the more decisions you're faced with, the harder your life becomes. So I don't want to make the, the intraday stuff again look too easy. But I've, I've been guilty of that too, it's, even with the core stuff. It's like, say I'm looking for three points and I'm like, oh, I got three points. Well, let's see if we can get four points or five points or six points. Now, there are ways you could do that. If, if you're looking for three points and all of a sudden it, it kind of blows through and you got four points, then by all means, put a one point trail and stop and then maybe a two point trail and stop. Make sure you get that three points out for that initial profit target is what we're talking about and then ride the trend the rest of the way. And if you go in and look at the presentation I did last week where I talked about like the SST trade, I used a little bit of discretion to ride out that that intraday trend and it was a core position past the initial profit target. So hopefully that makes sense. But what I'm talking about here is like, okay, I've got my three points. Well, let's just see if I get four or five or six or seven and the market starts coming back in. It's kind of like the, the, um, the turkey story that William O'Neill told and I think it, that might go further back than William O'Neill, but the guy had, you know, a turkey. He was he needed a turkey, I guess, to eat for Thanksgiving, obviously, or whatever. And uh, he's got one turkey in the trap, and then all of a sudden, he's getting ready to pull a little lever, lever, and drop the thing and have a turkey. Another one walks in, and then another one walks in, and another one walks in, and so on and so forth. And he gets up to like, I don't know what the number was in the story, but let's say seven turkeys in his trap. And he's like, all right, I got seven turkeys. I just need one, but seven will be fantastic. And then one turkey walked out. It's like, well, okay, I still got six. Six would be good. Six is good, right? And then he's like, yeah, but I just had seven. Let's wait for that other, let's see if that other turkey walks back in or another turkey walks back in. And then the process, just one turkey after another leaves. And then finally he ends up with no turkeys. So that's where you have to be careful. And if, as long as you have a plan in place and follow that plan, then you're gonna do quite well. As I was putting this presentation together for my stock chart show, I got to thinking, you know, I better go back in and read everything leading up to this maze. And I haven't read everything leading up to it, but it's like, at least I better figure out what the outflow is. And when I saw the definition, I was like, man, this is perfect for trading, right? The force that accepts everything as it is. If I could do that, if you could do that, then my job is done and your life is going to be wonderful. Not that easy because there's a situation in Nigeria, you know, <laughs> and everything else. Now, the way you end up at the top, and I know I kind of beat the dead horse on following the plan. But the first thing is trade something simple and conceptually correct. I'm blown away, and I'm not saying this to be egotistical, because I believe you, I spent years chasing the Holy Grail, chasing that rabbit, right? And I learned a lot in the process. I learned it wasn't Holy Grail. And I think it's okay to, to have a positive attitude about finding a Holy Grail in your research, but just in reality, realize that something simple and conceptually correct is what is going to be your bread and butter. Find an obvious trend, find a pullback or a trend knockout in that trend or whatever you like to trade with that trend or an emerging trend, a bow tie, a first thrust, something like that, and trade it and stick with it. The other thing that keeps you with the freedom to go on with life is waiting for the best setups. And I'm gonna elaborate that in just one second, but just spoiler alert, somebody's like, okay, I like this stock, but I don't like this and I don't like that, but I like this, so I like it. It's like, well, wait a minute, listen to what you're saying. You're talking yourself out of this stock, as you'll see in a few minutes, if you're thinking about a stock, you need to be feeling F, yeah. 
and anything else you need to pass. So I'll, I'll, I'll stretch it. I'll uh, stretch that out, <laughs> flesh that out in a minute. You need to make a plan and follow it. I know easier said than done, but it, it, it's, it's not that hard. I'll give you my spreadsheet that I use to track trades. And if you could figure out where your entry is, which is just a little wiggle room above the pullback, or maybe a lot of wiggle room, depending on the setup, and your stop, which has to be outside the normal noise and at a part, a point outside the short-term noise and at a point where you're wrong on the setup. And we talked about that, I think, the last week or week before. So go in and watch that if you can't sleep at night. Stealing a joke from Greg Morris, just don't operate heavy machinery after viewing. He was talking about his stuff, but it, it applies to mine too. <laughs> so the plan is 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 not is not that difficult once you have embraced and believe in a methodology. Okay, got a lot of feedback coming in. There's a piece of humble pie waiting for you. Yeah, you know, I tell you what, that's that's the beauty of um, and that's one of the secrets uh, to trading that's really not a secret. And I need to, I need to finish it up. I started. I, I have a bad. I'm, <laughs> I'm a starter, not a finisher. You know, it drives my wife crazy. It's a short trip, but that's another story. Uh, she didn't watch these, obviously. So I'm always talking about her family and shit. <laughs> one day I'm getting a lot of trouble, but uh, that day hadn't happened yet. Anyway, um, I'll start on a series and, and I'm, I'll never get around to finishing it up just because I'll keep adding to it or I'll get sidetracked on something else or I'll watch a documentary that gets me excited about trading or whatever the case may be. But anyway, the where was I going with all that? Oh, um, the way I was going to wrap up that one segment could be the way I could wrap up any segment. And that's like document, document, document. and I don't know if I was, I had, I certainly didn't have this after any, I haven't been in, I haven't done any international trips since COVID obviously hit. But now that I have this, because the tags are there and everything else, I can go in and look at the losing day and say, aha, this was the day after you got back from Hong Kong or the week after you got back from Hong Kong or whatever, where you were still full of yourself. <laughs> So that's that's been a godsend. And then the documentation, the document, 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 you know, like I said a thousand times, it's like every time I walk in the office, it seems like I make a bunch of bad trades. And and I immediately rush to my screens and start making trades. It's like, well, wait a minute, Dave, you've been sitting around for three hours and you didn't make one trade. You you go in for lunch for 10 minutes, and then you come back out and you start trading. Like what 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 gives? And then it finally dawned on me. I was, I forget who was talking about it, but they did a study where the judges were way more lenient on their sentencing, sentencing after lunch as opposed to before lunch. Before lunch, they were hangry. So that's one of the things that will come out through the documentation. So through documenting everything. So do document as much as possible. Okay, somebody asked me, and we might have to pick up on this one next week due to our time constraints here, and I'll do that. So we'll just go ahead and jump ahead. But his question was, what does it take to be a successful stock trader? So I'll pick this up next week. It's funny. I come into these things, and I'm thinking, um, boy, I'm not going to have enough time. I'm, boy, I have way more. There, just the opposite. I don't have enough material, and then all of a sudden, I have too much. So let's jump ahead to to this and we'll pick that up next week. Okay, so this was a private message I received today. Not meant for the week in charts. I think you might think it's the week of, of, of charts or public, but I thought I'd, I would share this with you. There have been several stock ideas shared in Facebook group. Out of all of the things that Mike created, I find that this is the strongest generator of FOMO. A lot of the time I see suggestions, ideas that do not even seem to follow anything that you teach to each their own, which is which is fine. You know, that's what makes a market. 
sometimes I can see why they might be a trade there, but other times it seems like a high risk idea. Since I consider myself still new to the group, I know very little about the other members, their styles, and how they might differ from yours and their performance. Do you have any advice for Gordon to take versus the Facebook recommendations? Well, if it's outside of my methodology, I'm probably not going to do anything. I, I am guilty of being goaded on occasion to do things that I probably shouldn't do because other, people's are, do, other people are doing them. Um, one thing I'd recommend is just give yourself some time. I, I don't want to speak for the for the members, although in one case I did explain to somebody that the member was 15 years old and had just started trading. So you might want to see how he does for a while before you start to follow the recommendations or the things he's doing. And uh, not to pick on somebody that's young or new to trading, but give it a little while. So basically, I would suggest you watch people and usually. If it's something related to my methodology, I'll chime in. So what I'd recommend there is just wait and see how people are doing. Now, there are certain people in the group, and I don't want to call anybody out, I, and I haven't followed anybody in particular lately, just kind of from a casual level, but there's the people that occasionally print money in the group. And it's when the momentum is just going nuts and they're just in there just pounding it out. And I I watch them, I follow them, and and I'll take some of the stuff that they're doing then. But but you need to watch like anything, like anything I said, you need to watch through a few cycles and not just meet somebody in the group this morning and trade what they're trading this afternoon. So that same sort of logic takes place. So my only advice, or my main advice there would be just get a feel for everyone. And some people uh, do some certain things and and like John John Ross for instance he's here tonight he does a lot of IPO stuff and I really dig what he does and he does a lot of stuff that I do and sometimes I get ideas from him that I that I'll trade and I'll pick up ideas from other people in the group too quite often but just make sure that it fits your style now if I had someone like I wouldn't mind having someone like me out there that that's doing all this momentum work and sharing it with me because it fits it fits what I'm doing and believe me it's easy to get goaded into something that you don't want to do like I have a client for instance that's a scalper who is absolutely amazing until he blows up but then he's absolutely amazing again and you know I try to do some of his stuff and I just can't do it and I had to learn with my hard earned cash not to do that so make it your own that's the other thing too don't that don't completely turn it on its head but if there's something i'm doing that makes a lot of sense to you then then make it your own maybe put some little tweaks on it or whatever but make sure you're sticking to what the with the crux of what i'm trying to do is so far i haven't taken it because i think the environment was right to pull i did i think the environment was right to put on a trade yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's 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 about a line is and and that's one thing that that I've been kind of preaching in the group is the group is Dave Landers Trend Traders. You have to be at least a, a gold member of my website, DaveLander.com, for more on that. If you look in the links below, if you're watching this YouTube, they're they're down there. But yeah, I'd love to have you in the group. We have we have a really good group, and and I've made a lot of money off of the group. But you do have to be careful that you don't get goaded into doing that something someone else is doing because they might recommend something and they're day trading and by the time you get around to take a look at it and like hey maybe i'll take that they might already be out so make sure you understand fully what they're doing and unfortunately you know you have all the documentation for my stuff you have all the courses you have all the webinars you have everything so you kind of you kind of know how i would think and, and a lot of guys who have been with me for a long time when somebody brings up a stock, be it a TKO or one of my other patterns or something, they'll chime in. This is well, you know, Dave's probably going to say this. I don't want to speak for him, but they they know how the methodology works, how the momentum works, and everything else. So yeah, give it some time, and that's the other thing too. When like when the conditions really start taking off again, there's certain people in the group, and I don't want to call you out because I don't know if you want to be called out but there's certain people in the group that do really really well 
and they're trading a little bit more on the active side, maybe slightly super active side, but I will I will begin to pay more attention to them when that happens. Like somebody once told me, and then he kind of disappeared, so I don't know if he's still around or not, but he told me that he follows me when I'm hot. And he also did this with some other traders too. And I'm like, dude, tell me when I'm hot. <laughs> you know, tell me when you're following me so I can pay attention to this. And then he kind of clammed up and that's the last I heard of him. So get a feel for how it works. See how they're doing in these mediocre conditions like right now. And then see how they do when things are really blowing and going. So just take your time and get a feel for it is what I would say to that. Okay, I guess my follow-up question on the issue is not so much about dealing with FOMO and more about separating the bad ideas from the good. I am still trying to improve my stock selection, but since nothing is screaming F, yeah, then maybe there has been some improvement. Okay, so he's learning. See, listen to what he's saying. He's saying that nothing is screaming F, yeah, so that's the, that's a big part of the stock selection. As I kind of talked about a few weeks ago, I woke up thinking about this trading gauge. And if you were to take the time and fill out a dozen of these on every trades, especially this one that's meh and F yeah, and you're feeling F yeah on a trade, then you need to take that trade. If you're over on the meh column, then don't take that trade. Now, if you take a lot of F yeah trades and you're losing a lot of money on the F yeah trades, then maybe it really wasn't an F yeah trade go back and work on your stock selection a little bit. So one thing I'll do is if it's something that's related to my methodology, and I know that they're trying to trade or trying to learn my methodology, I usually will chime in on that. For instance, if you look earlier today, somebody was asking about SRPT and they answered their own question, okay? Uh, I would have liked more persistent, I would have liked more movement above the base, however price has been persisting lately. So he's sort of saying, oh, um, it's it's got this these problems, but but this is okay. And and I'm kind of picking up in this case where he's he's looking for action or he's just excited. And, and I know him; he's a sponge, and he's looking to to make some trades. And so I pointed out, you're becoming a better and better stock picker. However, listen to your own reasoning. You would like this, but are willing to settle anyway based on other reasoning. Why not find a stock that has more of this and not settle? By more of this, I mean more of what he likes. Yes, it's easy to get caught up with what's going on in the group. Forget it and focus on the main stuff and maybe study some of the picks, but don't worry about thumb them. Yeah, you know, and, and, and there's going to be people that heat up and cool off in the group. And and you got to realize, like, over time, it's 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 don't feel that FOMO, okay? Because over time, it's going to kind of level out. I mean, you guys have seen me go through drawdowns this year publicly and a lot of the things I do and, you know, and, and just sit on my hands for weeks and weeks and not do anything. So yeah, there's going to be the ups and downs and, and you got to just let that FOMO go. And if you do have an interest in something that's a little ancillary to the core methodology, but still maybe like my setups, or similar, like what John's doing with the IPOs, then by all means, pay attention to that, wrap your head around that. And if that's something you like to do, then he's out there doing the research in the group and I'm throwing them out there too. Take a look at that. But yeah, find, stick with the core methodology if that's what you're here for. And then over time, learn about some of these ancillary things that everybody else is doing. I mean, it'd be, it'd be pretty boring if everybody did the same exact thing every day and only found the core methodology. So George said that, hey, this thing broke out, but it pulled back into the base, but I still like it. Well, no, it pulled back into the base. Leave it alone, okay? So trade would trade would makes sense to you while not letting picks add to your FOMO. Now, it might take a little while to learn who's who. I can't, I don't want to speak for people, you know, unless, unless they're holding themselves out or, or kind of appear to be holding himself out as a certain type of trader to a certain type of, th type of thing, then maybe I could I could tell you that. Ideally, what I'd like to see, and if you if you look at the rules for the group, which once you join a group, you never see the rules again. 
But the rules are like, hey, if you're going to throw something out there, tell us what you're seeing and tell us why you like it and tell us what you're trading and how you're trading it. And just like, you know, my stuff is like, hey, here's a pullback. Here's a TKO. Here's a bow tie. Or if it's an IPO, it'll be like, here's a buy at B or let's watch these buy at Bs and things like that and things of that nature. Okay. Hello, David. Cannot make the weekly charts because of the time difference when it comes to Look at the charts, DHT, pull back, but maybe too far below all time high. Well, it pulled back below this previous pullback in here. So I would toss that one out. Otherwise, it's a pretty good looking stock. Okay, here's another one, DHT, LI. Well, this is LI, okay. And XP, first thrust and bow tie, maybe too much overhead supply. This one's a little tricky. I would not take this trade. And he's pointing out the overhead supply. Once you have trading through the overhead supply, which would be a range above the market, then it becomes a little trickier on how important that overhead supply still is, okay? The further away it is, the less important it is because that supply works its way through the system. But in this case, I would pass on this one just because it's got a lot of potential bad memories on the chart. And then here's another one. Now, this one looks okay. I wouldn't worry about the overhead supply here too much because that's up in the 20s and the stock is down here. So that's nearly 100% move. That might be worth trading. However, upon further analysis, if you kind of zoom in on the chart, you could see that it had this gap here. And then the whole trend upward is just basically these two days here. So, I would much rather see a more established trend as opposed to the market getting excited for a couple of days. So I would toss that one out based on that. All right, I am running way late, but let's take a quick look at crypto. I'm just gonna take a look probably just at Bitcoin, maybe Ethereum, unless there's anyone else you wanna look at, any other ones you wanna look at. Um, start asking about any additional stocks you wanna take a look at. Now would be a good time for that. And we're gonna rush through those quickly. And then also we'll do the, um, I'll do a quick market update too. So let me uh, shift gears, get over to crypto real quick. SST is one of the only IPOs that worked in 2022. Yeah, I'm long um, and I'm probably gonna admit some guilt here. <laughs> I'm long, uh, what's the one that we were looking at? Um, trying to think of the name of it. Uh, it'll come to me. But yeah, it's uh, so far it's failed miserably. I actually made a mistake and I only bought it in one account. I was supposed to buy it across more accounts. And that was a, that was a mistake that turned out to be uh, a good mistake, <laughs> but a mistake nonetheless. Okay, Bitcoin is uh, kind of hanging in there. It's pushing toward this 30 EMA. I noticed GBTC is having a hard time really getting going again. GBTC has like a 40% discount to premium, which sounds great. You're buying it um, on sale, 40% off. But there's a reason there's a discount. I do own some GBTC longer term, which is one of the few investments. And that's, that's a that's a admitting bad behavior type of bad investment. I may have drank a little too much Kool-Aid. I did make a lot of money in crypto a long time ago, as did everybody. <laughs> I am a tiny bit of a believer in Bitcoin, but I do believe that all asset classes will lose at least 50% of their value in your lifetime. And you can see, obviously, Bitcoin did, went from 60-something thousand to 17,000. I love the naysayers, though. Oh, yeah, I told you, I told you. It's like, wait a minute, Bitcoin was 25 cents. <laughs> 2009 you know it's like it went up quite a bit it got better ethereum nothing to really report here let's wait until these things get above the 30 ema the 30 ema could really keep help to keep you on the right side of the market all right let's shift gears over back uh, back to stocks and then um we'll take a look at the current market conditions and then we'll Get to your stock picks. 
S&P 500, a little bit of a bounce today. We're kind of getting stuck in this range, as you can see. And if we take out the bottom of the range, I would become a little bit concerned. Short to intermediate term, let's throw some bow ties in here. We have been improving as of late. So kind of a kind of a sloppy bow tie, but we're in uptrend proper order still. And again, we're getting this little range in here. So for the most part, SPs look okay. We did get thwarted at the 200-day moving average. It's something you want to pay attention to. Don't don't make your trading system that in and of itself, but pay attention to 200-day moving average. Let's take a look at. Let's get back to the major MIGs. So, in general, doing pretty good. I actually would prefer, as I would say, quite a bit for this market to just kind of gradually work its way higher. I can make a lot more money by positioning and taking partial profits and trailing stops as opposed to a market that just goes straight up. I'll make a lot of money over a few days or weeks, but then longer term, it's hard to sustain such a movement, as you likely know. NASDAQ Composite, not quite as good as a piece, stuck in a range too. If we get we got a little bit of range here, I begin. I would begin to become a little more concerned. We have a, a double bottom where the where the right side overshot the left side a little bit, and that's fine. In fact, double bottoms rarely work out perfectly like they did kind of in, in um in the rusty. I actually like them better when they kind of overshoot a little bit because that shakes out a lot more people. But you know, NASDAQ longer term still in a downtrend, short to intermediate term, trying to bottom out. At the least, as I've been saying, a nausea, we're right around where we were several months ago. So that's that's a lot better than going straight down, right? Let's take a look at the dollar real quick. The dollar has rolled over. Stick a fork in it. Looks like it's done. It's pulled back a little bit in here, but it looks like it's continuing to roll over. So, so much for going to Europe. <laughs> Euro, you can see, headed higher. Dollar lower, Euro, Euro higher. So it looks like the Euro's bottomed out here. Gold, the commodity, you can see has worked its way higher as of late. Probably not for the reasons that all the people are screaming on the radio, but <laughs> like my father-in-law said, why would they be selling it to you? <laughs> well, because they make a profit. It's like, well, he has a point. If it's going to go up 200%, why would they sell it to you? Rusty, double bottom there, kind of a, I guess it's kind of a head and shoulder type of thing too. Multiple heads, multiple shoulders, complex head and shoulders is what they call that. I don't trade directly, by the way, off of classical technical analysis, but I use it to back what positions that are that I might be taking or back my setups, I should say. Energies are becoming a bit of a bummer. Breaking down out of this little bit of a range in here. And, and I always hate markets when they, they have these strong sell-offs and they try to come back and then they just don't get past the prior highs and they get overbought longer term and then kind of roll back over. Um, I am long CENX, or that's a, that's an aluminum stock. I'm long nine N I N E, which looks okay. So far, so good. Or not great though. Obviously, I think we're a little underwater on this one, but it still looks like the trend remains intact there. It still looks decent longer term. Metals and mining looking pretty good in here. They've bottomed out. They've been in a pretty good uptrend as of late. So that's certainly pretty cool maybe we'll get some setups there soon drugs have been going pretty much straight up another case of back to the old highs but we had a lot of trading in between and consolidations and stuff so so far so good for drugs biotech not quite as good but in general doing okay major bigger picture bottom in place maybe that's a head and shoulder bottom if you want to look at that or a complex head and shoulder bottom what else uh semis i like to watch the semis as i preach ad nauseum and the series is doing okay in here. In here, it had a good day today, but they're kind of stuck in a little bit of a range, like a lot of other areas. I'd like to see them break out and not look back. Okay, let's uh, shift gears and go to stocks. Jeff says IPOs West. Yeah, that's kind of interesting. Um, trying to think why I didn't get too excited about this one. It's a little on the thin side. Maybe that's why. Yeah, it's pretty thin, so I'd be careful. It can have a little volume here and there. Um, it's okay. And the buy at B you would have bought, right? Uh, as crazy as it sounds, it would have been on this day here. And I probably wouldn't have bought that gap coming down. So it's just kind of chopping all over the place. 
Uh, so you're long on Bybee? Yeah, well, you know, it looks like it's working out for you. So what is that IPO that I'm long? I forget it. I can't think of it. It starts with an A. Kind of a shame trade. Ooh, look at that. Now, again, why did I not see this one, though? Okay, yeah, it's kind of thin here and there, but, yeah, it's interesting. So, yeah, good job on the buy B there. Um, it's a little on, a little on the crazy side, though. It went down to $2 a share, then it came back up to trigger. But, yeah, I can't argue with that. Buy at B, day one is the high for the week, so the buy would have been on this day here. Sweet, man, you're doing really good on that. Good. Uh, congratulations, Jeff. Very nice. Okay, any any stocks, any other stocks you guys want to look at? I know there's a couple things I'm supposed to look at in the live charts, but I'm going to have to get to that next week. Oh shit. Did I forget to um did I forget to publish tonight? Oh crap. Thank you, John. <laughs> I was in a hurry to do the show. ATAT. Yeah, ATAT. It, ATAT's kind of a shame trade. One, I didn't take it across multiple accounts that I intended to, and then two, it got away from me. When it, yeah, well, it didn't go that far away from me. I'm just, I didn't have a, I didn't have a stop in place, and it kind of came back in. So the buy B there was I bought it on this day here. I bought it a little close to the close, and you can see it's kind of failed miserably since, but now it's getting its act back together. It's starting to look pretty good. Thank you, Jeff. You got it. So Jeff is our new IPO expert. You and uh, you and John will have to fight it out, huh? <laughs> I missed it. It looks like a trigger hit. Yeah, you know, it might be worth, you know, it could be worth a re-trigger. And that's something that um, I haven't studied a whole lot. Uh, buy a B plus one is something we looked at, like what happens if you get a trigger on subsequent days. And that's what I talked about initially in the uh, IPO course. But yeah, a re-trigger, yeah, it might be uh, college fund worthy. <laughs> Joking. But yeah, it might, I might, I agree with you on that one. Okay. All right, well, I think I need to probably wrap things up given the time here. Everybody, uh, I appreciate you attending tonight, John. Thanks for the heads up on the service. I'll get that published as soon as I hang up here. <laughs> uh, everybody have a great weekend. If we don't talk again, I'll see, I think everybody here is mostly Facebook. So I'll see you guys tomorrow in the group. And then uh, we'll, uh, everybody else, hope to see you next week. Enjoy the Headspace discussion. Oh, you're welcome. Mark, I believe me, I am not immune. <laughs> <laughs> Believe me. All right. Again, everybody have a great weekend if we don't talk again. Thank you so much.